Hello, and welcome to our online worship being brought to you from First Lutheran here in Lorraine, Ohio. I'm Pastor Rosalina Rivera, and I'm delighted that you decided to join us online today. It's hard to believe that it's been 50 days since Easter, but today, here we are celebrating another festival without being able to gather for worship. Today, we celebrate Pentecost. It's the day when the Holy Spirit was received by the disciples of Christ and sparked the growth of the church through the disciples of Christ. In today's gospel lesson, you'll hear the story of frightened disciples who were forced to shelter in place for fear of persecution. Similarly, many of us have been sheltering in place with many fears of the unknown. I wish I could share today that I know the exact date when we will resume worship. I wish I can say that church will one day go back to the way things were just a few short months ago. But as you know, our reality has changed. There is a new reality that has affected every part of our church, but it doesn't mean that we can't celebrate the movement of the Holy Spirit this day. Just because we aren't able to worship in person doesn't make us a stagnant church. Because of what we have made available online, we are literally reaching out all over the world. And isn't that what Pentecost is all about? The movement of the Spirit doesn't stop because of a pandemic. And for you and for me, well, our church will once again rise from the ashes to redefine what it means to be church together. No, I don't know when we will be able to commune. No, I don't know when we will reopen our church. But I want you to know that your church council and our COVID task force and myself will come up with a plan that will keep everyone safe when that time comes. Until then... I invite us to hold fast to the knowledge that Christ is present in, with, and through all things. God also knows our predicament, and I trust that he or she is okay with us not having communion or gathering in a building in community. Because of, as I have said many times, the church isn't the building. It's about all of you. And I trust that this congregation more than most knows what it's like to go without better than most churches. We hope to be able to offer some additional ways of worship within the next few months. We're always looking to improve what we are offering for you, and we thank you for your continued support. In closing, on this Pentecost Sunday, may the fire of the Spirit burn bright within your hearts this day and always. Enjoy worship today.
Let us pray. O God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things, and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then... Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, Word of Life Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves, or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we know your Holy Spirit is here and needs no invitation, both in this empty church and in our homes. Lord, stir us by your spirit, to be your hands and feet, to be your disciples, to demonstrate peace and love to all people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think the word peace has become desensitized in our world today. I was a product and a child of the 70s, and I recall many stories being shared about the 60s and Woodstock and the movement of peace through our nation at the end of the Vietnam War. And while many claim that there was much peace, it was also a tumultuous time in our nation with issues of race, politics, and music expression. Over the years, we've turned the word peace into a symbol more than a feeling. We used to put the peace symbol on anything in the hopes of ensuring that those who read it 
would tr that truly know that you were an advocate of peace. But what does that mean? Does that mean that you're against any violence? Are you a person who just likes wearing tie-dye shirts? Or is it the same peace that Jesus refers to in this text for today? We don't know exactly what went on in the upper room in the days after Christ's death, but the Gospels give us a pretty good idea. We know there was fear. That's why his followers were hiding out, shut up behind a thick wooden door in a small room. We find ten disciples cowering in a room, afraid to come out. The doors were shut and locked, drapes drawn, the windows were closed, and the disciples were full of fear and despair. They have just seen their Lord and Master crucified on a cross and buried, and then on the third day his body disappeared from the tomb, although the angels of the tomb tried to assure them they were still afraid. They still did not understand that Jesus had been raised from the dead. Overwhelmed is a good way to describe how the disciples must have felt after Jesus died. Huddled together in their fear and confusion, not knowing where to turn or what to do, their leader and teacher had been, who had held them together all those long months was dead and buried, executed like a common criminal, and his body now missing from the tomb. What a disappointing turn of events. When Jesus was laid in that tomb, there went all their hope, their vision, their sense of direction and purpose in life. They were left with an overwhelming sense of failure, loss, and shame because they knew that they had deserted Jesus in his hour of need. Were they more disappointed or disillusioned with themselves or with Jesus who had raised their hopes so high? Jesus had been executed. They could easily be next. They feared those who caused the death of Jesus would come after them. Not an unrealistic concern. But most of all, they were just paralyzed with fright. They didn't know what to do, what was going to happen with them. And there was confusion. What had actually happened? Had his body been taken or was he really alive? It also seems that there was some disagreement among them. The women were convinced they'd seen him, but the disciples had a hard time believing their report. They were at loose ends. And then there was the matter of what to do next. Should they pack up and go home? Back to their fishing necks, tax collecting booths, or should they carry on with their mission? But what exactly was their mission now that Jesus was gone? Who was in charge? So it was a troubled group of Christ's followers gathered in that room that day. They were full of doubt, misgiving, and fear. Could a dead body really rise again? Then Jesus appeared, walked right through the closed door. He came looking for the disciples when they were in need. He forgave them for their denial and calmed their fears and simply says, Peace be with you. At this time of COVID-19, don't we wish that Christ would do the same for us? In our fear, disillusionment, uncertainty, who in my family is going to get COVID? Which of my friends will be next to be hospitalized? Don't we wish that Jesus would stand among us and say, peace be with you. This greeting was not just a common day greeting. It was a promise from Jesus to those disciples, and it still is to us today. He was assuming that the frightened disciples, that everything he, assumed, he assured them, that everything was going to be okay, just like the same assurance we receive when we invite each of you every Sunday to share peace with one another. The peace be with you always. And if we will, we can receive the peace of Jesus just as those frightened disciples did so many years ago. The problem was, of course, is that Jesus couldn't stay. He was returning to his father, 
And he would not stay with them to calm their fears, to settle their disputes, to help them carry out his mission. So instead, he gives them a gift, his Holy Spirit, to be with them and in them always. And in this gospel, Jesus actually breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. I read this analogy this week in a commentary as I was preparing for this message that I thought I'd share. Let's think about our body for a moment. Our body is in the shape of a cross and our heart is at its center. Our heart is where Jesus should reside, where he placed the Holy Spirit when he breathed on the disciples then and breathes on us today. Our bodies are a reminder of his suffering and crucifixion and our heart, the Holy Spirit, is a reminder of his resurrection and promise that he would never leave us. He is dwelling in us, standing with each and, each and every one of us each and every day. Something I used to pray with all the time was a hand cross, and I forgot to bring it in here today when I was recording this. But I know some of you have it, and you might recall that a few years ago we gave a hand cross to each of our confirmands. Usually they are made out of olive wood from Jerusalem, and most of them have some sort of curvature to it so that when you hold it in your hand, it fits perfectly in the palm of your hand with your fingers wrapped around it. The bent parts are designed to remind us of the agony of Christ that Christ endured for us. And by holding it in our hands with our fingers easily wrapped around it, we can hold on to it when we may need to feel comfort and have the reminder that Jesus is always with us. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. I am going away and I am coming to you. Jesus promises that he will be with us forever. And if you have ever had a promise that is kept, you know what a wonderful experience that is. And Jesus keeps his promises every single day. So you might be asking yourself, how can I increase the peace that I have? How do I find that in this world? I'd like to commend to you five, five points. One, see the value of peace. Maybe you need to take, a, take peace a little more seriously. Maybe you need to think about how good it feels on those days when you are calm where you know where your next meal is coming from, where you're going to sleep tonight. You have a little money in your pocket and a few friends to laugh with and have fun with, even if it is virtual. That peace is sought after and valued by many people. You want to work for those peaceful, gentle days when there's no needless arguing, waste of time, worrying over little things. Think of those things that are important to you and whatever you value and seek it out. Number two, trust God. Trust that God, what God says in his word and completely give everything over to him. When we do that, we enter into his peace. What peace am I speaking of? Of course, it's the peace that Paul spoke about, the peace that surpasses all understanding. You can at any time tap into that trust in God anytime you need it. Number three, Make a decision to please God first. It's not possible to keep everyone in your life happy all the time. That doesn't mean that you act rudely toward them. Just don't try to please another person at the expense of displeasing or dis being disobedient to God. Live to please God first. Number four, mind your own business. I've learned the hard way that the less I know about people, the better off I am. Being nosy and spending energy trying to learn what other people are doing or saying produces anything but peace in your life. So mind your own business. Number five, let peace be the empire, the umpire of your life. If you're thinking about doing something and you don't have peace about it, if you know it will hurt or discourage others, don't do it because if it's not peaceful, it's not God. And if all of those things fail, 
I encourage you all to take a deep breath. Let it out. And simply say, God, let your peace live in me. Try saying that. Take a deep breath. Let it out. Now say, Jesus, let your peace live in me. Take a deep breath. Let it out. And say, Holy Spirit, let your peace live in me. If you'll put those suggestions into practice, a more peaceful life might be possible for you. Remember that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and he can provide the tranquility that we all long for. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this mission of peace is not ours, and it's not the church's. It is Christ's mission. And today, he stands in our midst and says, receive the Holy Spirit. The breath of Christ provides the lungs for day 51 and all that follow. Today, in case you've forgotten, does mark 50 days since Easter. And when we remember all that is to follow, it's always apparent to observe the work of the Spirit. The miracle accompanying Pentecost and this story, though, isn't about the wind or the tongues of fire. The miracle of this day is to hear the extraordinary deeds of God in our own language. And what better way to express that and through the language of peace that is universal to me and I hope to you. The universal language of music. And so sing with me this song if you know it. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with God as our creator, family all are we. Let me walk with my family in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin in me. May God continue to bless and keep you all safe until we are able to gather again. Amen.
Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in our church that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort. We especially pray for Bill and Cheryl Emery, Steve Mendiola, Diane Trinter, Linda Milchen, Anna Campbell, Marlise Anderson, Tom Stasniak, Carl Johnson, Tom Alt, Dave Dittmer, David Laboda, George Becker, Dave Templin, Bob Hollis, Pastor Woody Chamberlain, Jim Unger, Chad Williams, David Chapnois, Dick Geisler, John Laws, Albert Newyear, Gail Winger, and Jeter. We also pray for those who are having surgery, especially Fran and Candace, Pat Brumenschenkel, Jake Beckley, all medical personnel, first responders and staff, all Stephen ministers and those they care for, the ministry of Akrapa and Pastor Ben and his family, those affected by COVID-19 pandemic, those feeling lonely, too isolated, especially those in nursing homes and rehab centers, especially Jane Cooper, Sally Stouter, and Marianne Arnold. All caregivers, all city, state, and national leaders making decisions on our behalf of others, businesses reopening, and those who have lost their jobs, and for those we name silently or at loud at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet in our congregation and outside these doors. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. As you have led your saints in all times, in all places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. We especially pray for Nathan Sauer upon the death of his wife, Kimberly, and all who will die today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share with those around you.
Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And here now the final blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
start lining okay. people up to right, do I'm this. Sorry. Wait, wait. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, I press record. Then. You're okay. fine. Uplifted. I can't wait.